And talking about food security, African women in agriculture under the umbrella of Gender Responsive Agriculture Systems Policy Grasp Fellowship have been assured of policy frameworks that will support the female gender in agriculture. At an event in Abuja, the conveners promised smallholder farmers a career development that will promote gender responsive agricultural policies for women. When it comes to the issue of climate change, well, since I've been on that desk, I do, I is a deliberate. I don't, I, I do it deliberately because I've been to the field, I know where the shoe pinch is, so, and I know that, yes, there's a way we're supposed to go for us to move forward. So, bringing out all these uh, facts, and I'm not looking at the issue of bringing out data. We want desegregated data. This will be able to show picture, to show the true picture of what's happening out there. Not when you lock up a lot of people. And I'm glad a lot of women communities, women organizations are coming up. They are saying that we don't want law pop data. We want desegregated data, including the um, vulnerable groups. And this will help a great deal in showing a lot of, which we show, to bring up a lot of things that are happening on the field. Effective policy cannot really be done without data. So we need data that will support all these things that we are doing. I want to say that if all these uh, projects come to fusion, we are really going to be addressing the issue of gender disparity. Now for more perspectives on Newsnight, we are being joined by a food security expert, Mr. African farmer Mogaji, who joins us from our Lagos studio. Mr. Mogaji, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, with more than 31.8 million Nigerians facing acute food shortages, how then can the government address the immediate needs of these citizens without compromising long-term food security strategies? Well, um, based on the activities that has been happening in the last few months, um, the, the proposal to remove taxes on food, um, allowing food to come into the country uh, with a 150 days window, uh, those are immediate steps uh, and about the only steps to ensure that we have food on the short-term basis. The removal of fuel subsidies has also been cited as a contributory factor to the food crisis. Then how then do you see the government responding to this situation? Well, um, the government needs to work more with the private sector now. Um, so over the years, the same strategy we have been using is to focus on the smallholder farmers, which is good. Uh, but however, that strategy has not ensured that Nigeria uh, is food secure. So what needs to happen now is government needs to work with um, SMEs or MSMEs, the micro, uh, small and medium or the small and medium, um, to backward integrate such that they are no longer supporting, uh, fully supporting the rural farmers, which are, which are the smallholder farmers. Earlier in the year, it has been done you know, at various levels. But right now, we need to focus on uh, organizations that work with the farmers, such that there's accountability, uh, there's traceability, then we can have good data and records. If we still continue with strictly smallholder farmers, we will not be food secure, uh, considering that the floods are ravaging uh, many of the states. So we need to rejig uh, our strategy and working with uh, SMEs, processors, producers, is the only way out. If we don't embrace that, those figures will keep increasing. But Mr. Mogaji, now the problem is this, moving from smallholder farmers and you know, dealing with MSMEs to deal with a clear and present problem. Now, time is of the essence, isn't it? Is there any time to deal with this? I mean, what you're suggesting, is there enough time for that? Because, I mean, it's a clear and present problem at the moment. 
Yes, uh, there are no two ways about it. We're already in a dear situation, and no matter what we do, there needs to be a short, mid, and long term. Uh, well, uh, as the case is right now, everything needs to be going on together. All the plans must be working at the same pace. So right now, there's no two ways. You can't just fix the short because fixing the shots in the last three months is still where we are now. So we have to fix the short, medium, and the long term. That's the only way we can go about it. And mid to long term is focusing on the MSMEs in every state, and that's not federal. It's inched on the state governors. Um, I think the state governors can do better than what they are currently doing. Um, the, I, the federal is actually doing more than most of the states. And regionally, the states need to work together now, uh, considering that um, the challenges we are having with food security is regional. And so each region have various food, uh, farm produce that they focus on, have peculiar challenges, but regions are not currently working together in the field. On paper, on media, there's a lot of media ops talking about what they are doing, but in the field, they're not working together. They are still working in isolation. And so if flood affects two states in a region, the remaining three states, are not, they are all not working together until the states work together regionally. Uh, this food security is still a mirage. Now, given that uh, the, the phenomenon of the severe malnutrition being faced by women and children in the country, what specific interventions would you suggest or do you think are needed to be put in place to protect these vulnerable groups particularly? Well, um, it's actually gone beyond women and children. It's everybody now. In fact, men, the mental health of most men and most farmers is even a bigger challenge. You know, the women are wired, they manage things. The children may not be able to manage it, but the mental health of men, especially men in the agribusiness value chain, is something we need to pay attention to also. You know, because people who uh, are able to farm maybe 10 acres, two acres, one, five acres, who are now doing one uh, acre, two acre, drop their production by 50%, and you have other costs going up, it's a big challenge. For the women, um, we need to be deliberate in um, developing models and programs around processing and other value chain beyond production. We still, when we design, we're still designing women to go into production. Women are more wired to work in the value chain outside production because it's tedious and very uh, and the drudgery. So we need to change that dynamics of pushing women into production. Women can engage in harvesting, but not the core production. But processing, marketing, distribution, that's where we need to push more women to in local governments and states. And in fact, if you can break it down to world level, that's where the women can really flourish, and that's when we can, uh, as food security can be guaranteed. Currently, the women are in production with the men, but by nature, they are not wired for that because of uh, the, the family demands also. So we need to change a lot of dynamics around what we've been doing. We've been doing quite the same thing over and over, and we're getting the same results. But we need to change the dynamics right now. Now let's look at the effectiveness of government's uh, past interventions. First, duty-free importation of food items. The 10,000 agro-rangers you know, being recruited to be deployed to secure farming communities, among many others, yet with little results, so to say. So what could be done better? Well, basically, the private sector, the missing link now, uh, based on the current realities, is the private sector. Now, the I, with my experience uh, and uh, exposure in the last few months, government has opened up, especially federal. States are willing, but they've not really put it out there. But the private sector 
they are still um, holding on to the old ways of doing things to say, oh, if you go to government, things are slow. But right now, government is willing to open up, but the private sector is also not leveraging. Until the private sector leverages right now, we may not be food secure because government will still do what they need to do. Government implementation is always a challenge with most um, government interventions. Why? Uh, most interventions are commercial in nature. And government is not wired or does not have that experience for commercialization. It's the private sector. So we private sector are running from government interventions. Unfortunately, most interventions are not designed along with private sector. But right now, based on the challenges, the private sector needs to move closer to government now so that we can be food secure. And also, um, private sector needs to be focusing more on impact and profit. And government only focuses on impact without profit. So the business model we need to be looking at is a social enterprise where impact and profit is 50-50. If we design interventions without profit, we will not get the private sector and it will not be sustainable. And if the, we design history, if the private sector designs it only on uh, profit, impact will be missing and government will feel they don't understand us. So right now, every, the key players, private and government, we need to shift you know, grounds to meet midway so that we can feed Nigeria. Because it's affecting the private sector even more than government. Because the staffs of the private sector, they're feeling the pinch more. Fuel is going up. And let me say this. We don't actually even have the right price for the food. Now, fuel has gone up, power has gone up, water has gone up, logistics have gone up, and yet we still want the farmer to sell at the old price. If the farmers put the right price on food, it will not be at the reach of the average Nigerian. So right now, we need the private sector to know that they are not getting the best out of their staffs currently. So they need also you know, to work with government. And, and the private sector and government needs to also unlock um, CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility uh, uh, funding available in many of the organizations so that you know, we can come in. Government needs to shout to say, we need help. There's no superhero right now. Everybody is a hero if we work together. All right, Mr. Mogaji, I think we should take a look at a very critical point here. You know, I did talk about the agro rangers and in its ineffectiveness so far. So let's take a look at the issue of security. The Boko Haram insurgency, the uh, farmers' header clashes, um, you know, banditry. These have significantly reduced agricultural output, affected farming, particularly in the hinterlands and probably even in the you know the urban farms now what additional security measures are needed to restore confidence in agricultural production in these affected areas well um i would say this and many people who don't go beyond the cities may not know this um, in terms of security it has improved you know, greatly improved for Bonu, many locations where the farmers could not go before, now they can go there. Uh, so it, security has increased, um, however, not to what we would want. Now, the media is very key. We're not leveraging on the power of the media yet in ensuring farms are secure. One of the way, one of the reasons why you have um, the Boko Haram, the insurgents guys, um, ravage farms and nothing happens. Take for instance, if we have like mobile phones, dedicated special numbers, if we have radio stations, online uh, and the normal ones, have special numbers where they can reach out to radio stations, where radio stations can verify by putting calls to other community around. The, you know, if we do that, and that goes on media, it helps uh, the military, the police, the, the security agencies act quickly. We are not leveraging media. And so if you hear that there's a challenge in this village, 
the villagers must have the phone numbers of dedicated lines of the next adjoining villages. So bottom line is media, media, media. We're not leveraging media enough in the role of combating uh, insurgency, banditry, anything that stops Nigeria from being, being food secure. We need to bring in media as a major stakeholder. Until we do that, we will keep having these challenges. At this point, we would like to thank you so very much, Mr. African Farmer Mogaji. Very interesting name there for your contributions uh, to, you know, uh, highlighting the issues raised in this topic. Thank you so very much.